Hello everyone, I'm Megasprite. Around the beginning of the new year, my friends and I started a Terraria server together, and I have already put around 40 hours into it. I talk even more about accomplishments and builds in this episode, so sit back and relax as we get into everything that's gone on. My main weapon is now the Knight's Edge, coming from the Zapinator and Aqua Scepter. I have a Molten Pickaxe and Axe of Regrowth, both reforged to light for extra mining speed. For my Summon and Sentry, I still have the Vampire Frog Staff and the Flame Burst Rod. I was only able to use the Flame Burst Rod after completing Guild One's army. Since I had set up a nice area for the event, I just grinded it many times till I had enough Defender's Medals to purchase the Defender's Forge. Although the grind came close to an hour, the extra storage for on the go is very handy. Also, the thing looks really cool. Only complaint is you have to place it to use it. Considering how I want to always be prepared for fighting, building, mining, or whatever, I keep a Rockfish in my hotbar as well. The Rockfish does a decent bit of damage for a tool, but its main use is my hammer. It has 70% hammer speed, which is the best you can get in pre-hard mode, also tied with the Molten Hamax. I reforged it many, many times, but couldn't get the Light Reforge for the extra speed, so when I got Legendary, I just stuck with that. Legendary still gives added speed, so not a complete loss. Although I don't see many people keep their bug net in their hotbar, for me it's helpful considering how I like catching critters to add to my bestiary. It's always on my mind, so hopefully one day I can complete the bestiary on the server, and surprisingly enough, we're already at 40% completed in pre-hard mode. I think we could do it. Just like the Defender's Forge, the money trough is just great extra storage without the hassle of having to place it down. Other than the fact I had to farm 4-5 to five blood moons for it to drop from either a dripler or blood zombie, I have zero complaints. I mentioned in part 1 that even after all of this time I had played on the server, I hadn't hellstone mined yet, so I grabbed one of my many obsidian skin and mining potions and went to work on the hellstone right underneath the forward operations base not only did the lava level drop because of all the mine blocks it completely undid all my work to mob proof this under area i can easily re mob proof it with my fast mining speeds but till i do that if anyone wants to lava fish they will definitely get interrupted by a mob or two when i said i went to work i mined 1500 hellstone in one obsidian skin potion for context that's six minutes I mined enough for my friends to make full Hellstone armor as well, so I shouldn't need to mine any more from now on. When it comes to the forward operations base, nothing much has changed except a few more banners have been added to its collection. Coming over to the right side of the forest base, here is where I refought Skeletron twice. One fight I won, one fight I lost. I used my Clothier Voodoo doll to kill the Clothier to respawn the boss. It serves me right for not using an arena, but we proceed. I was fighting him again to get the Chippy's Couch decorational item. I have never got it ever playing Terraria, and I will continue to refight Skeletron till I get it. With an arena next time, of course. Talking more about bosses, I got a ton of buff stations and potions to go farm the Queen Bee, but the moment I got into the jungle, satiated by the prospects of easy loot, I ran around collecting stingers, spores, chests, heart crystals, and anything else I could find. After completely filling my piggy bank in Defender's Forge, I went and dumped all my goodies into my unsorted chests and went back to the jungle to actually fight Queen Bee this time. I made sure to bring what little stingers and honey blocks I had from home so I could make more summons and farm her all day. I made sure I got all her drops, including the Bee's Knees, that one really good Juice World song, the Bee Keeper, and the Bee Gun. I also crafted full bee armor, the Hornet Staff, and the High Five, the bee-themed yo-yo. As a collector slash hoarder of items, I hope to display all the cool armor sets, weapons, and pets I have in the future. Considering how my accessories would actually work pretty well as a pre hard mode summoner, I might try to make obsidian armor or just use some bee armor on some boss fights. Now that the Queen Bee is defeated, the final pre hard mode boss before the Wall of Flesh is Deerclops, but my friend said he would like to fight that together, so it will be fought on a later date. Other than my insane amounts of fishing I have continued to do for my never ending quest for more items, my biggest project was the isolation of the two corruption biomes. After breaking all of the orbs in the world to fight the eater as many times as we could, the corruption biomes are basically useless, so with my maxed mining setup, I went to town making 8 block wide tunnels to completely negate further corruption spread. I understand that in hard mode, corruption and hollow spawn everywhere and spread rapidly, but this should help prevent surface corruption. Lining the tunnels with uncorruptible blocks was the most tedious part, and to be honest, it's not finished. I mentioned my mining setup being maxed, till hard mode at least. Well, after long last, I finally maxed my fishing setup. I got all the accessories I needed from the angler to make my fishing setup 100% complete. So here's what we got. Full angler armor, which provides 15 plus fishing power. A lava proof tackle bag that provides 10 plus fishing power, plus a whole host of different buffs towards fishing. A regular tackle bag, which other buffs don't stack, except for the 10 plus fishing power. 
an angler earring for another 10 plus fishing power, and finally, a fishing bobber for, get this, another 10 plus fishing power. Oh man. Now, I specifically have the glowing fishing bobber, but there is other fishing bobbers which cosmetically look different, but don't do anything but add 10 plus fishing power. Now, I was curious if you could have multiple fishing bobbers, considering how they had multiple variants, but that answer was sadly a no. I do plan to get the Helium Moss Fishing Bobber, which glows rainbow in the water, but that's low on the list of priorities. Man, I wonder how many times I said fishing power. Added in 1.4.4, the Labor of Love update introduced Ludouts. I didn't learn about them until long after the update was released, but here's how I took advantage of them. With one click of a button, you can switch out between three different loadouts, and considering how I have three different important armor sets, my Molten set, my Angler set, and my Mining set, I immediately knew I would utilize them by having my fighting slash general travel loadout, I'd have my mining loadout, and then I'd have my fishing loadout. Now, I obviously knew I want what I wanted to have in my accessory slots for the fighting slash general travel. Obviously, I got my molten set, my uh, combat stuff like my stinger necklace, my worm scarf, obsidian shield, all that stuff for extra defense, yada yada yada. But... For loadouts 2 and 3, which would be my fishing and mining set, I knew I had my general fishing accessories, um, but I also had two mining accessories, which barely fills the other slots, so I was just like, okay, I'll focus on movement. So I got them both, both loadouts, Spectre Boots. I got uh, them both double jumps, so this one has a tsunami in a bottle, and the fishing set has a blizzard and a balloon. Now, I'd give them both a balloon, but I kind of want the bundle of balloons for my main set only issue is is balloons are incredibly hard to come by i've traveled through all of the sky islands and have found no more balloons other than the first two and when it comes to sky crates from fishing they're not only incredibly rare i've pulled four um i pulled four lucky horseshoes and nothing else so that's not happening um so when it comes to vertically uh, vertical movement uh fishing set's perfectly fine but the um, mining set needed a bit of a boost, so I got the frog leg, because you get these really easily from fishing a bunch. I also gave it a feral claw, just because if I am mining underground, I'll be using this loadout, and I don't want to constantly swap back and forth just to like take out a hornet when I'm in the jungle. And of course, I have the tool belt, the hand of creation for the mining set, and then I got the four important accessories for the uh, fishing set. So as you can clearly tell, this is the fishing one, because of the hat, if I switch back to... My combat set, I have the Worm Scarf, and I have the Obsidian Shield visible, and of course I got the Terra Spark Boots, if you can see the green, you know, just to flex a little. And with the Mining set, I've got the Tool Belt and the Hand of Creation, all visible. Now, if you're curious what the um, little thing on the top of my head is, I bought fake unicorn horns from the uh, Traveling Merchant. With my thoughts on the loadouts completed, thank you for watching, fellow Terrarians. In the next showcase video of the server, I plan on obtaining the rest of the accessible pylons and hopefully making it to hard mode with my friends. I plan on streaming this as well, so make sure to like and subscribe because I have been having a blast playing on the server. And with that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you all for the support on the last video, and I hope to see you all again very soon.